Before I get started, I want to thank Audible for sponsoring this video. Right now it kind of feels like my fingers are vibrating and I don't think I'm supposed to feel like that. Oh, this isn't good. This feels really bad. <laughs> oh no. What's happening right now, this is not microdosing. Microdosing for context is the consumption of a small amount of psychedelics, usually LSD or psilocybin, which is most commonly found in magic mushrooms. These are compounds that have the power to take a normal human brain under a neural scan and light it up like this. Scientists have been interested in the effects of psychedelics since the 1950s, with the CIA testing LSD on subjects with the hope that it could unlock the power of human mind control. Spoiler alert, it didn't work. However, a sudden shift in culture and politics at the end of the 1960s made psychedelics illegal, and almost overnight, it became virtually impossible for researchers to pursue any new testing or research into the effects of these drugs. Until very recently. Researchers are experimenting with the use of magic mushrooms. They're showing they could treat things like depression, PTSD, and addiction. The results so far are so encouraging. People come out feeling alive again. The past decade has produced incredible breakthroughs in the use of psychedelics for treating various mental health conditions, with additional research finding that microdosing a small amount of psilocybin could also boost creative thinking. So for the next 30 days, I wanna try microdosing psilocybin to test three of its most common claims, that it can improve our creative thought, our focus, and overall mood. And at the end of my 30 days, I'm going to conduct a large group test to see if any of my personal experience holds true on a larger scale. I feel so dumb already. <laughs> Quick disclaimer, I live in one of the few cities that has voted to decriminalize psychedelics. You can purchase magic mushrooms at a walk-in store, and I know that is not the situation for most people. Also, if you're watching this and you're a cop or my mom, uh, this is a sketch, and none of it's real. But if it was, here's how it would work. Once every three days, I'm going to consume one-tenth a recreational dose of psilocybin, which for me is going to be between 0.2 and 0.3 grams. This won't be enough to experience the trippy, dreamlike experience psychedelics are known for. Instead, it should be just enough to explore the creative and productivity benefits many people claim to experience through microdosing. While I may feel some effects through the first couple hours, from what I've read, I should continue to see benefits from the microdose for the two days following as well. So on day one, I took what I thought was a proper microdose and sat down to test it out. So this is day one microdosing for creativity and productivity. My plan was to go through some writing on an upcoming video, and it was about 45 minutes before I started to feel a kind of unfamiliar feeling in the back of my mind. I continued working, and for a while, my concentration on my work remained focused. So focused, in fact, I forgot my camera was rolling, and when I did remember, I couldn't find my words when I tried to explain what it was I was feeling. Brain just goes like, oh yeah, like all this other stuff. Then I proceeded to do 18 more takes, convinced I was failing to get any of them right. Just when I'm on the work and I can really lock in. Oh gosh, I don't think I did this right. <laughs> Eventually, I decided I wasn't in a state to get any work done and instead watched Midsummer on my sofa. Coming to terms with the fact that rather than a boost in creativity on day one, my experience was more like a mini trip. <laughs> The prevailing theory is that top down structures that we learn throughout our lives, psychedelics seem to add all kinds of entropy in a way that you're allowed to look at things from a new perspective, but also develop new patterns. This is Martin Schreck, the co-founder of Synthesis, a psychedelic retreat that has been working with researchers from Imperial College to explore the transformative effects of psilocybin. It really helps with people that seem to be too stuck in a certain pattern. So think about addiction, OCD, body dysmorphia, anxiety, depression. Often those are loops that people are in. And what comes up is how we really feel and everything we've been holding, whether that's you know, sense of trauma or sense of gratefulness or sense of connection with, with uh, our loved ones, that becomes very, very, in, almost intensely present. After talking with Martine, I know I need to be more careful measuring my microdoses at the start of each day. And almost immediately, I started to see a real spike in my daily productivity. One thing that's really noteworthy is on my second and third days when you're still supposed to be feeling those like carryover effects of the psilocybin, I had two of the most productive days in recent memory. I mean, I got all of my work done that was on my to-do list. I worked out early and efficiently. I even was like reading some short stories before bed. So if I have more days like that coming ahead, that would be amazing. 
but these benefits didn't last. Today, I'm really struggling to stay motivated with my work. My thoughts feel really loose and unfocused, and this is not the first day I have felt like this, especially when I am in the first couple hours after I take a microdose, I'm getting really inconsistent results each time I take it, which can lead to days like this that suck. So gotta say one and a half weeks in, not the best so far. After a frustrating couple of days, I decided to put this challenge on hold for a week to try and figure out a better way to approach it. Then when I was editing through my interview with Martin, I found this piece of advice that I'd forgotten he mentioned. The experience is very dependent on the context in which it is taken. For example, you take a painkiller and painkiller works whether you're at home or whether you're in a plane. With a psychedelic, you have a very, very different experience in those two situations. So what I would recommend you do is every time you take the, the microdose, you do it in conjunction by starting out with a meditation or uh, listening to a binaural beats or whatever is your preference. So I decided to shift the time of my microdose to the evening while carving out time to pair it with some mindfulness breathing and music. Other activities I tried including drawing while listening to an audiobook, doing some journaling or reading, all of which made the experience much more relaxing and easy to get through, and allowed me to stay productive with my work the following day. While I am seeing improvement in my experience since I switched to microdosing in the evening rather than early in the day, I know I can't draw any meaningful conclusions just from my own personal experience. So I decided to take a closer look at the 2018 study that found microdosing psilocybin improved subjects' creative thinking skills. I wanted to find out how their research team was able to measure something as complex as human creativity, and it turns out it's pretty hard. To simplify their tests, the research team divided their focus into two areas of creative thought, those being divergent and convergent thinking skills. Convergent thinking focuses on our creative problem solving when there is a single solution that may require some out of the box thinking. Divergent thinking, on the other hand, measures our mental flexibility by asking subjects not to find one correct solution, but instead to come up with as many possible solutions as they can imagine. A common divergent thinking test is to give someone an item and ask them to list as many possible uses for that item as they can come up with. So to test if microdosing really can improve our creative thinking, I asked my brother Cam and some of our friends if they'd be willing to try some divergent and convergent thinking tests to see how they scored. Whoa. Draw four continuous straight lines connecting all the dots without lifting your pencil from the paper. Move one matchstick to make this equation correct. I feel so dumb already. <laughs> so as many uses of this item as possible. You could tape it over an outlet to baby proof the outlet. Oh, ooh, it gives me a back scratch. It looks like a good vessel to like float on top of water. <laughs> Once the first test was complete, they agreed to each consume a microdose and return in 90 minutes to take a second test. If their scores came back higher the second time around, we'd know microdosing produced an improvement. But I also realized I was introducing a variable here. If my second test wound up to be harder or easier than the first test, it would ruin the whole experiment. So to control for this during our first round of testing, I gave half the subjects test A and the others test B. This meant if one test was harder than the other, it didn't really matter. When they came back for round two, each group would just take the opposite test. We also included a control group who didn't consume a microdose between the two tests to see if their scores improved at the same rate as everyone else's. All that was left now was to see how they fared. Uh, yeah, let's start with waterboarding. <laughs> you can signal with the pen. Yes, no. Make yourself vomit. The cap, you should take a very small dose of something. <laughs> oh. I know the answer to this one. This is too easy. Use it to eat food out of. Oh wait, no, that doesn't actually work. So, like a little bit of that? As a fan. Like a shoulder stretcher? Put it over a loaf of bread when it's rising. The 59th day. Honestly, you, nah, I don't know. Maybe that, that micro dose did do something. <laughs> when we tallied the results on both tests, the scores on test A improved by 20% after subjects consumed a microdose, while the scores on test B improved by 50%. When we compared these results to the control group, we found the control group showed no improvement between their first and second test. So I think that pretty much speaks for itself. Microdosing definitely makes you smarter and more creative, proved it with science. Yes, science! Obviously I'm being sarcastic as our sample of eight people is way too small. But as we were working on this video, one of the very first phase three tests with over a hundred subjects showed that therapy aided by psychedelics was able to heal mental trauma caused by PTSD. 
It's one of the largest studies of its kind, and I genuinely believe we are entering a turning point into how we classify psychedelic substances, understanding them as a tool that could be transformative for so many people. All that said, the major claims around microdosing remain largely unproven, and even though I was kind of shocked by the results of our mini experiment, there was nothing I found in my experience that would lead me to recommend microdosing as a meaningful tool to unlock your focus, creativity, or improve your mood. If you would still like to learn more about this topic, I recommend you use the sponsor of this video, Audible, to check out Michael Pollan's audiobook, How to Change Your Mind, What the Science of Psychedelics Teaches. It's actually a much longer title, but it's a great resource that tracks the history of psychedelics and includes so many details I wish we could have included in this video. Personally, I've been using Audible for at least five years now, and what I love is that with your membership, you get a free audiobook credit every month from Audible's vast library, regardless of price or length. So if you are like me, that means you are going to use that credit on a 20 plus hour fantasy audiobook that you can listen to when you go for a walk, work out, or make breakfast. Recently, I did this with Patrick Rothfuss's Kingkiller series, which I would listen to every morning as part of my daily routine, and genuinely, two of the best books I have ever experienced. And listening to them as part of my daily routine made doing things even as basic as folding laundry delightful, because I got to spend that time in a story I loved going back to. I just can't recommend them enough. Right now, Audible has a special holiday offer to our viewers where if you go to audible.com slash goalguys, or you can use your phone to text goalguys at 500-500, you'll get a free trial and 60% off your first three months. That means you can get all 27 hours of The Name of the Wind, which is book one in the series, for free if you use the link below. And your digital library is yours to keep, even if you cancel. Again, this deal is only available if you go to audible.com slash goalguys or text goalguys to 500-500 for a free trial and 60% off your first three months. You can gift Audible to someone you love this holiday season or just gift it to yourself. Thanks so much for watching.